There are many ways to approach the line, even if my hands are new to feeling one. A prairie stride ducking the overhangs of shops, lace skirts, and fig tree leaves, watching red-faced Americans bringing bags back from the north. To them, scarves and silk charms, and to the Greek eyes, maybe hope. Then there is the line from above, cutting the city across like an uneasy grin, as if to say, we all wanted something, but we know it's not this lifted slightly at each end, like an apologetic shrug for forgiveness. From there, the line stretches to each coast. The pen may be smooth, but cuts earth like a knife through a village like soft Sajukos, taking homes in the name of making two. One can see it's jagged at points. Perhaps the guiding hand had been stalled or startled by gunfire, by unimaginable sadness, or by the loss of a country so used to overturning. Or perhaps the sharp edges had been gifts, intentional swerves leaving orchards with organs for growth. To the south, we leave the grapes, sweet vines with growth unrelenting, as open as Dionysian arms. And to the north, we leave the olive trees for your strong flesh and stronger pit. What is done with these fruit is what has been done before, like waves or time, falling apart to emerge again, maybe old, maybe new. My land has never been so. As such, I speak softly of longing and only in imagining. But each night I see imagining eyes around me on the hilltops and balconies, wondering what those mountains held for years behind the blinking flag, wondering if it's possible to be whole, wondering if they peak the same. Out from door stoops and domed mosques, enraptured by the same Odyssean mysteries, the ones that brought me here from snowy plains and the safety of constitution. So we together pass as ghosts do through the empty house of seven empty streets. We pass ourselves in the passport glass, catching only reflections across time and bloodlines, across centuries of becoming, across like horses of Troy filled with wishes for peace. <laughs>